Deep divers need lips. Nano deep. Chip, I'm trying to shoot a video over here. Nano deep divers get nano lips. That's a tiny one. It's a thin sheet of Lexan polycarbonate. One day. Even a sixteenth of an inch starts becoming a little ridiculous for the super small stuff. I don't even know what diameter this bit is, but it's smaller than a sixteenth of an inch for sure. Those are holes for the line tie wire to come up through and also slip down under the lip and into the body of this nano deep diving crankbait. That's what we're making this video. I like getting the lip making out of the way real quick. I always prefer to give those wires a twist in, so it's just one hole you have to drill at the bottom of the lip to get that in there. I feel like it grabs better too, having a twist wire connection down under the lip, into the body. We're cutting the body out. Leaving room for a big bulbous eye socket. That'll complete the look. Dot profile. That didn't really feel safe on the 12 inch disc sander. My thought behind the shape of this bait is that that flat belly will make it so I don't need to put weight in the bottom of it. Along with the lip and line tie being below the center of gravity of this bait, or at least the center line of this bait. And then having one little screw eye coming off the belly right there, that's extra weight with the hook attached to it. It's gonna float upright, it's gonna be nice and buoyant. It's gonna be a floating deep diver. I feel like I'm gonna catch fish today. We got neighbors mowing the lawn real loud. We got me forgetting to say what time it is at the beginning of this video. One day. Feels like summer, man. It is summer. 9.54. It's like a 9.30 start. <laughs> One day. Gotta stay away from the socket with my carving knife if I want there to be one. You gotta really watch what you're doing with this little stuff. It's just so easy to take off too much material in spots. You gotta go super slow and stay away from lines. I did not fart when I dropped that bait. I squeaked. <laughs> Giving it some eye socket definition. This bait's looking kind of buff. Looking good. Safety before results should be the standard, but I'll leave the standards to other people. Okay, time to get that lip in there, I think. I just bring the lip to it and kind of put it where it should be and press in a little bit right there. It made a mark and then I made a mark with my pencil and I grab my knife and I make a mark with my knife and it's a flat edge knife so I can really press it in there and it's nice and straight. As I'm pressing it in there, I'm backing up and checking for straightness. Is that line straight? Yes, it is. Go a little further with it and then I come up from the bottom. Am I showing any of this? And cut to the line once. And that was my first removing of material where the lip should be right there, boom. Are we straight? Yeah, it's straight. And I take some of the uh, material that the lip's made out of, I'll take the lip itself and just, I need the thickness of this lip marked out. So I press it against where I remove material and I just kind of roll it and apply pressure. Yeah. But you see where it made a line right there? That's the thickness of the lip. Draw another line, cut another line, cut to that line. 
also marked it out side to side there. I'm gonna cut on those lines as well. And then I'll be kind of done removing material with the knife and then I break the Dremel out, so one sec. Before I can even test the fit of that slot, I need to make a hole. It's gonna be a sixteenth of an inch for the wire under the slot. Whoa, that fit perfect. That just popped right in there perfectly. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Whoa, it's perfect. <laughs> Look at that cute little Nagonia. Nano deep diver. I'm gonna throw a screw eye into this thing. Epoxy that lip in. Super glue bath. One day stuff. By the way, we're giving that a shot. Hook hanger right there, somewhere in the middle of the body, not all the way to the back. We're gonna test how hookups are with that. It might help because my thought is that the treble hook can hit the body and become immobilized while the fish is trying to bite the bait. Might dig it into the fish's mouth a little better. That's my thought. And we're gonna try my thought on this bait. Man, this thing's feeling good right now. I'm gonna seal the wood before I install the lip. I don't wanna compromise. Squirt super glue in cup. I'm gonna brush it on. I'm getting crusties. Oh, I added too much and got crusties and now I'm gonna have to sand for 10 minutes. Whatever. Fine. Five minute epoxy. I gotta scuff up that lip. Quick, quick, quick. We're on epoxy time restraints. That's a very straight lip too for such a small bait. We did well, fellas. That line tie can be adjusted. It's kind of crooked, but it's just a straight, straight deep diving lip right there. Good stuff. We're just about ready to paint. Okay, time to see if this was even worth making. I'm nervous. I'm, I always get nervous for small baits. It sits upright. Here we go. Oh, it's got a little shimmy. You guys see the shimmy? It's a very small one, but it's great. But it's a nano bait, so the action's gonna be small too. Okay, now I'm highly confident in the action of this bait. Just gotta put a sweet paint job on it, and we got a sweet nano deep diver. Nicely masked off lip. We're gonna start with white. Coo tone. I'm gonna start a nice little fade with this color. So I started pretty light at the bottom, got a little heavier at the top, dumped it on till it was opaque all the way at the top. Now, starting up even higher and going opaque at the top again with vascular violet. This is gonna be the backing before some scales. We're doing scales on this base. And if you're noticing these new colors I've been having in videos, I picked up the Tim Gore's Bloodline set from Createx, and boy is it applicable to lure making. It's got fleshy, natural tones. I guess that's the best way to put it, fleshy, natural stuff. Okay, this isn't all we're doing to this before scales, one sec. Back to some opaque white and a stencil. I'm gonna try to stay on the belly and have it fade to the top. Woo! <laughs> That did it, cool. That is going to show up under the scales and the scales are gonna be quite powerful. We're gonna go heavy with a fancy color shift. So that's why they're gonna be quote unquote powerful. So I got a little cup of magic right here. Pre-mixed magic. Doesn't look like much in this form, but there is a ton of color shift powder mixed into that. It's going in the brush and it's getting shot on the bait. I just held that at one angle and just psh, 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 psh. It kind of flash dries. You go psh, and it just immediately hits the bait and dries and you can layer it up really quick like psh, 
That's what I was doing. Shifty. That's going to be beautiful. This bait didn't need a lot of clips. Dude, it did it again a little bit where it took a whole scale off because I really globbed it on. See how some paint is stuck in the mesh? It came off. But you know, once again, it gives it the natural missing scale look, I guess. Whoops. Man, I have been a little too paint happy when it comes to scales. This side's perfect. In real life, that is just some unbelievable, like is that real? Looking color shift stuff. I'm gonna put some detail smoke black around the eye socket. We're gonna choose an eye for this bait. Boom. Eyeball chosen. I already knew I wanted those. I knew I had those and I knew I was gonna use them. Yeah, that is absolutely perfect match. With the white iris and the white lines in the body. Very, very happy with that paint scheme. Especially for a one day. Wowzers. And I already know that the action's immaculate. Nano deep diver. <laughs> one day. Get that masking off the lip. Had a bit of a hole in the masking around the line tie. We got some paint in there, but whatever. Clear coat. You know the stuff. UV resin just makes a fantastic clear coat for fishing lures. A very, very durable one. In my experience, it rivals the durability of a two-part epoxy clear coat. It's harder. So if you have a system for getting it extremely smooth, like it could be the better clear coat, you know? I just know how to get two-part epoxy clear coats super smooth with my rotisserie and how to mount the bait just perfectly. That's why I use it for my nicer stuff, two-part epoxy. And for the one days I use UV. Gonna pick off the imperfections for a few minutes. It's kind of a cloudy day today, but I'm gonna see if it still sets nicely. It's okay if it doesn't, I'll just break the lights out again. I brought the cup out here and I can tell it's kind of setting. So th this is working, it's just a lot slower. Yeah, it's hard. It looks so good in the sunlight. Even through the clouds, it's doing a good job of curing. Bada bing, bada boom, tied up and ready to rock. Fantastic clear coat, zero bubbles. This thing is going to grab light and throw it with its perfect little shimmy shine action that it's got. I am confident. We're going to a creek too. We're gonna go to a creek, find the holes. Be careful not to snag this thing, it does dive, and this thing is going to attract attention. Let's go get some of that super desirable fish attention. That's the attention I crave. Fish love. Maybe we'll go to a pond after this. Deep divers and creeks usually don't mix. But I don't think this is such a deep diver. It's got a pretty narrow lip and I think the water is going to shed off of the sides really nicely. It's got a really fast action. It doesn't grab a lot of water and want to dive down super hard. So, If I struggle at all with it in the creek, we'll go to Jesse's. Got my Pfluger President reel on a five foot ultra light pole. If we hook into anything with some size, we might have an issue, a very fun issue. Man, that is a pretty low creek. Let's go find a hole. Oh great, the trail's closed. Little lucky deer family over there. Probably gonna start snorting at me again. Ooh, I think that was a big minnow <laughs> that hit the, hit the side of my bait. I would be thrilled if I caught actually caught a minnow. I got a 25 pound test leader on here. 
just in case I hook a pike or something. Dude, if we can get a fish out of this miserably low creek, I'll feel pretty accomplished. I caught a pike right there one time when the water was high. Give me that fish. Got him. There was one on it. It's tiny. It's official. Small mouth like nano divers. Nano diving crankbaits. Be free. That was the first bite. Yeah, I don't think you can call this a deep diver because it doesn't dive very deep. It's just a diver. It floats really hard and dives kind of shallow, actually. There's one. This one was hiding in a tiny little hole. Not much bigger than the last, but you can really tell on that rod <laughs> that it is. A little bit better, small mouth on the Nano Diver. Got a bit more official. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Got one, wasn't even looking. Come on, be a new species. I think it is. <laughs> Good old sunfish. Something bluegillish, you know. That's not quite full bluegill, I don't think. Has a very stubby tail. But it's official. That's the second species. Be free. It's the kind of stuff nano baits were meant to catch. And we got one. We're getting closer to the river. Hopefully that means we'll catch a baby muskie. Had to get five pounds of sands out of each shoe. That feels a lot better. <laughs> I see a really big fish. Hit it. Hit it. Whoa, man. Okay, if those fish don't want this, I'm going to catch them a different way because they're right there and they're not moving and they're looking for food. They're just not considering my bait food, but they will consider this food with minimal consideration too. Three inch prey bait. We will throw the nano deep diver back on shortly after we destroy these bass. All right, I just got a bump right there. What are they looking for? They're just right there. They're looking for something. Insects, why not three inch prey baits? All right, they asked for it. I wasn't gonna do it, but they're pretty much asking for a 1.7 now. Didn't think I was gonna have to be this heartless on them. I was giving them a fighting chance, but they didn't want to fend for themselves. Gotcha. So we needed a 1.7 that didn't move. <laughs> that was resting on the bottom, essentially. That's a pretty good smallie. Pretty good creek smallie. Thanks for biting. The merciless 1.7. Got another. There he is, and there he goes. That one ripped the tail off. Okay, let's put the bait back on. We'll just have to go find somewhere that's uh, not only biting off the bottom. That's all they're doing here. I can see the ticks just waiting to hop on. Not ideal. Some Indiana Jones stuff right here. Look who it is. How you doing? All right, you look like you're kind of standing up to that. Get out of here. I don't need you to be on my butt while I'm walking back to the truck. What? 
here we go got some sweet custom wooden crankbaits i made for some friends that are showing up here soon let's see if we can make something happen at a bajornson pond with the nano diver just a week ago this pond was covered in schmoo now it looks very clear you guys see that little dude and it's immaculate action. Oh, I just had a hit. Hit and a miss. Ah, I'm missing fish. There we go. Let him take it a little. Got our first fish of the day. It's a bass. Third species, pond bass. It's official, like nano divers. Be free. It was kind of difficult to get a bite out of these guys. Let's just find out how they treat something bigger. 5.6 inch prey bait on a weedless beast hook. Oh, ah, that was a bite, a little one. I turned, I turned my foot, getting ready for a hook set. You should have saw me. I was about to swing away. Cast back up here. Gotcha. Woo. 5.6 inch prey bait bass is a bit bigger. Straight through the cheek. Maybe not even one pound, I don't know, but you know, 5.6 inch prey bait. They don't care. They eat these things. I hope I have more. Thank goodness. So far it has seemed like they want the bigger presentation. I have gotten more bites out of a 5.6 inch prey bait than the nano diver in a shorter amount of time. Oh, bro. <laughs> oh, bro. I'm having a lot more fun with this 5.6 inch prey bait. I have said 5.6 inch prey bait too much in this video. I'm sorry. Oh, that was another good bite. Yum, 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 yum. I think they're here. Nate, how you doing? Good one. Sweet, dude. Yeah, you bet. I got another bag in here for Matt. Take oh. your pick, whichever bag you want. Cool. Or you can mix and match. Yeah, that one works really, really good. This is These are like jerk baits. Yeah. Like they won't have as such of a consistent action just reeling in. Yeah. What are you? We're hooked up. That's a pretty good bass, man. Yeah, it's a pretty good one. Maybe uh, two something. On the 1.7, it does not just catch dinks. It's official. Be free. Even swam away slow like a big one. You ever hear the theory of when you release a bass, it puts off some some stinky stuff that warns other bass that like danger is around. You ever hear that? Oh, got you. That's a big one. Right at the bank. Get in here. Woo! Another two something. On the 5.6 inch prey bait, it's official. Maybe three, I should have a scale on me. Be free. It's a Bajornson bass. Oh yeah, I think that's their driveway. We're gonna go down to that. I think that's John O coming. Oh shoot, thank you. Oh, I wanted some of those, yeah. <laughs> thank you. That's a good fish. I think that's a good fish. Yeah, it's a little better. 5.6 inch prey bait. Did it again. Whew. Thanks for biting. Just got soaked. <laughs> that was a lovely bite. Just one solid bump, one bump and then had it. You recognize these? 
Yeah. You want some of these? Dude, for sure. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Take a couple. Nate. Matt. Good to meet you, Nate. You too. That one's on. On the aggro. What is this? 5.1 inch epic aggro. It's official be free. That was lovely. Here's some fancy handmade wooden crankbaits for you. Oh, shit. Those are beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. you this, paint them all too? Yeah, this one works really, really good. The action. Big guy? This guy's kind of like jerk bait ish. Got to like get in parts some action a little bit. They'd work in here. Thank you. So you guys want to go like murder him in the frog pond? Oh, That's my favorite. All right, it's you see that grate over there outside of the drain? It's like that wire stuff. You just cast on the side of that and let it sink. On the right side or left side? Left side. Left side, yeah. Okay. Yeah, preferably. I mean, they're they're right there, and you don't have to cast right up on it either. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, cool man, I was like, I'll help you out, like just kind of show how to do it. Got one. Yeah. Is that a good one? Sick, nasty, bro. Uh -huh. That's probably your first <laughs> Usually they're bigger, right here. But pictures got the vibe. Yeah. Right in there and get another one. And then whenever you get them up. That's a good one. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, that's like two and a half on the aggro. Pretty stoked about that. Be free. Can I ask a giant favor of you, Jono? Yep. Thank you. Yes, it has no tail. There might be one under that bridge. I always like that spot. Oh, I saw that. Fish on. Bigger one. That's like a one and a half, two. Kind of a long, skinny guy. They're all up in there, too. All the way to the tree. Yes, thank you. Thanks for fishing with me. Yeah, see you tonight. <clears throat> Didn't even say anything. By now it's the clicks of the camera. That's the Pavlog's dog. Is it Pavlog? But there's no G, Pavlog. Pavlov dogs triggers the the training. You know what I mean. Anyway, that was pretty freaking sweet. Got to fish with Jono and Matt Heckler. I'm a big fan. Got a Heckler shirt on right now. Went to a show that night. Got to see Jason O'Day. Jono is a straight up professional fisherman for a living. He fishes tournaments and, and places often. Receives winnings. Catches bass bigger than I've ever caught on the regular kind of fisherman. Hardcore fisherman, that's all I'm saying. Matt, I'm pretty sure you witnessed him catch his first largemouth bass in this video. Pretty special. And his second. And I put him on the bass, so that's pretty special. Like I told him, there's probably a bass right there. He casted, caught a bass. I'm proud of that. Went to the James Theater in Iowa City. Saw those three perform. Chelsea and I did. Pretty much flabbergasted. Super, super good performers. These fellows know how to play music. If you ever get a chance, go see these guys. There's no possible way that you would regret it. Good stuff. So yeah, the Nano Deep Diver, uh, man, I want to say it was good because the action was just great. Very consistent, very reliable little wobble. What? I don't know. There's some, I'm, it, I'm, I am reserving praise for this bait at the moment though. I'm wondering why. Why do I feel this way? I didn't catch anything of size. I had difficulties hooking up on fish with it. My treble hook under the body on a hook hanger midway through the body, hoping it would immobilize the hook points and stick into the fish a little better. I don't think it made much of a difference compared to the nano popper. So I'm just kind of like, meh. Pretty good lure, caught some fish, nothing big. Of course, it's a nano bait. What should I expect, you know? Thank you, Jono, Matt, and Jason for all the fun times, all linked below. Just go check out how talented they are. Video's over. On to the next bait.